All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to our fifth installment of the NJCA Forward webinar series. Uh, today's topic is NJCA student athletes on the front line. Uh, we'll feature former NJCA student athletes who are currently on the front lines battling the uh, coronavirus pandemic. Along with our roundtable discussion today, we also are uh, joined by two NJCA partners uh, from First Point USA, the official UK and China recruiting partner, and Life Fitness, the official fitness and exercise equipment provider of the NJCA. Our guests today uh, were welcome, are joined by Courtney Dawson, a former NJCA student athlete at Etiwamba, Matt Heckroff, a former NJCA student athlete at Tallahassee, Kirsten Albright, and along with Georgia Military College, Andrew Keene of First Point USA, and Jeremy Wilson of Life Fitness. Uh, really appreciate having everybody on and looking forward to uh, today's discussion. So now we'd like to uh, welcome Matt Heckroff, former student athlete at Tallahassee. Um, Matt was a two-year member of the baseball program, and he is currently a, if I have this right, a first-year resident doctor in internal medicine at the University of Louisville. Um, Matt, welcome to today's discussion. If you'd like to tell us a little bit about yourself, your uh, career path to the NJCA, and kind of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis now. Uh, absolutely. So first of all, thanks for having me. Um, uh, excited to be here. Um, so just a little bit about myself. So I'm initially from uh, Tallahassee, Florida, um, born and raised, played high school baseball um, locally. Um, and then my choice to go kind of go to Tallahassee Community College was pretty simple for me, actually. Um, uh, like I said, I grew up there. I was right down the road. I went to baseball camp at Tallahassee um, growing up, growing up a huge Florida State fan, which was two or three miles down the road. Um, and then I might be a little bit biased myself here, but um, the competition in, uh, in the Panhandle Conference, as well as just the state of Florida for baseball, uh, it's pretty unmatched. Um, I mean, Chipola's won the national championship multiple times in the last couple, last couple of years, and uh, we got to play them multiple times each year. Uh, Florida Gulf Coast, um, Pensacola, all those teams were great. So um, the decision for me was pretty pretty easy to go there and also just be able to in my backyard and have my parents be able to come and um, watch me play uh, all the time was pretty, pretty awesome as well. Um, after I got done at TCC, um, I uh, went down to University of Florida to finish up my um, last two years of undergrad. Um, and then I ended up going to medical school at St. George's University, um, which is actually down on the island of Grenada. I spent two years there. Um, and then I was two years in Atlanta doing my clinical rotations before I started residency. Um, and now, like, uh, like you said, I'm a first year resident at um, the University of Louisville um, in internal medicine. So um, what that means lately has been a little bit different than what it has been in the past with, uh, with everything that's been going on. It's been a little bit more chaotic than usual. We've kind of had to shift some of our schedules around a little bit. Um, for the last two weeks, I was actually on a rotation in the ICU, um, working directly with patients who um, were, were coronavirus positive. So um, it's been definitely an interesting uh, last year or so. It's kind of crazy to think that I'm already almost a year into to residency, but um, on day-to-day patients, seeing patients, um, admitting new patients in, um, it's been pretty, pretty great so far this year. Great. Thanks, Matt. Nice to have you on. And I know uh, Rob Cheney was pretty high on you, the AD down in Tallahassee, so he's glad oh, to see you on. Some good following down there, so okay. and glad to have you on. Uh, I'd like to introduce Courtney Dawson now, uh, as I mentioned before, a former softball student athlete at Etiwamba from 2010 to 2012. Um, Courtney is a uh, certified clinical medical assistant at Galen North Pediatrics in Hickson, Tennessee, I believe. Uh, Courtney, thanks for joining us today, and uh, if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, that'd be great. Uh, yes, um, thank you for having me um, on this webinar too. It's a, something I've never done before, but I'm glad I'm here. Um, so I actually am from Sequatchie County, Tennessee, which is about 18 miles north of Chattanooga. Um, but um, went to Sequatchie County High School and then played ball from the time I was four until I went to Itawamba. Um, but uh the journey to Edwamba was kind of different. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think I signed my scholarship two weeks before move-in day. So uh, it was a pretty, pretty crazy experience. Um, but I am very fortunate to be able to have Edwamba as my second home. Um, currently, what's going on at work for me, um, we don't do, you know, hospital stuff because I work in a pediatric office, but um, we are um, able to keep all of the kids and your teenagers out of the hospitals so that, you know, you're more um, 
elderly group and people that are more sufficient to get the virus can be seen um, there. Um, and of course, uh, with us dealing with babies, they are on a set schedule for shots. And so if they don't make those guidelines, then, um, you know, it's the possibility that they can't get that vaccine. Um, so we try to um, keep our morning shifts um, pretty much all well checks, physicals. And then towards the afternoon, um, that's when we um, see more of our sick patients. Um, we are, uh, it has been crazy just because of everything that's going on. But um, when there has been a sick patient come in, we've actually been letting them stay out in their vehicles. And um, us as medical assistants and also the doctors that we work for, we go out to their vehicle and we, um, you know, get their uh, vitals and everything. And then we come back and we let the doctor know what's going on. So it's, it's been a really hectic, but it seems to be working pretty well so far. Great, thanks for the information. And we're glad to have you on. I know uh, I've talked with Adam Gore at Etiwamba quite a bit, and it seems like, you know, there's so many alums from Etiwamba, they're on the front lines right now. And um, I think there's 20 to 30 former student athletes that we saw, and that's just, Really great to see, and we appreciate all you guys are doing. Um, Courtney, we'll stay with you yeah, for a absolutely. second here. Um, you know, these are obviously unprecedented times. It's just things that we can't prepare for and something that we never expected to come across. Um, this is your sixth year, I believe, as a CCMA. Um, you've probably been pretty accustomed to your routines, your day-to-day -day responsibilities. How has that changed? I mean, what, 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 what's it look like now, and how have you had to adapt? Um. I mean, it's, it's definitely been difficult because everybody's stressed out um, because, you know, not only do we have to make sure that our patients are safe, we have to make sure that ourselves are safe. Um, so, of course, having to wear um, medical mask every day, um, that's been a struggle just because it gets really hot under the masks. Um, but um, also the, um, you know, if we do have a possible case of the coronavirus, we, you know, have to dress down in, you know, uh, protected gowns, face shields, eyewear, everything. Um, so, you know, when it first started, we were having a hard time with getting those supplies because, you know, m the majority of everything was going to hospitals. Um, so it, that was a struggle. And we have had, you know, to, um, you know, kind of like come up with our own system just so we can get by and make sure that everybody stays safe, including us. Um, fortunately, um, our office that I work at, we have tested a lot, but we have not actually had a positive case. Um, but also, but there has been several cases in the Chattanooga area. Um, but being there for six years, you know, we, um, we're a team and we work through it, even though it's been really hard. We come together as, you know, a family um, in the work field and uh, we push through it. So we've been, we've been doing all right. Yeah, absolutely. As a, as a former student athlete, you know, that team mentality really, cut, really comes into play. So that's really essential right now. Um, you know, Courtney, six years in the profession. Matt, you're kind of coming up. You're going through your schooling, your education. Um, you're preparing all the best you can for your future. And then all this hits. How's that, you know, everything you've been prepared for, now it changes. What's that been like for you? One of the things, so one of the things that um, has kind of been new is coming into your first year of residency, it's obviously nerve wracking. You go from medical school where um, if you're kind of, if you're not there, things kind of move on. Where as a resident doctor, you still are making decisions. You're helping do these things and you're all learning about these things. And a lot of your attending physicians, um, you see a lot of the chronic heart failure, um, you're seeing COPD, a lot of things like that, that your attendings have dealt with multiple times that you're just kind of new to. Um, but now with this going on, um, it's new to everybody. So some, some, of these, some of these patients who come in, they're having things that are going on that not only have we never seen, but some of our attending physicians as well have never seen. So um, it's been a kind of a, a learning curve for not only ourselves, but for um, our attending and uh, upper level residents and physicians as well. Um, and then it's just the flexibility, um, kind of like Courtney was mentioning, the flexibility by everybody has been um, pretty, pretty incredible, actually. Just uh, the schedules. I know there's been some of my co-residents who um, have been on certain rotations and been had, had to be pulled into the hospital to um, kind of cover if other residents are not feeling well or if there's things going on like that. And so 
Um, everyone's been incredibly flexible. And like you were mentioning with the teamwork, um, just kind of seeing that team aspect of everything and everybody step up and do their part has been pretty, pretty incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, these are obviously life-changing moments for both of you. There's a lot going on that you've had to adapt to. Um, what, have, what have you learned? What, are, what has taught you both, you know, professionally or personally? Um, what has changed you? What have you learned? What's, what have you taken from all of this? Matt, if you want to start. Yeah, sure. So um, I think, again, hopefully not only just as myself, but in, in general, I hope people kind of learn from this and uh, just when everything's, since, since this is so new to us, a new, a new illness, um, if something like this happens in the future, hopefully we'll kind of learn from, the, from, from how we've dealt with it, um, be a little bit more prepared for it. Um, and then also we kind of carry some of these things moving forward, whether it be uh, even with little things like hand hygiene or um, kind of not going in too many places that are crowded if you're, if you're not feeling well, it's just things like that. But personally, um, I think that the things that we're going to kind of take from this are just uh, kind of like, like we were talking about earlier, is just how to adapt to, to new situations. So again, we've never seen anything like this. Um, we're still kind of learning as we go. Um, and then just kind of some of the adjustments that we've had to make in the hospital um, and the outpatient clinic and all these situations. Um, hopefully we'll just kind of be able to learn uh, moving forward with that and then make whatever positive changes we, we kind of have move forward with those. Absolutely. Courtney, how about you? Can you repeat what you what the question was? Uh, just wondering what you've learned from this, you know, what you're able to take of it, whether it's professionally or personally. Um, just anything on that topic. Right. Hmm. So I guess it's just, um, you know, I am a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. Um, I think that um, spiritually, um, I am a, you know, God is number one in my life. And I do believe that um, I think this has um, helped a lot of people come closer with God to, um, you know, better their relationship with him. Um, just because it is scary. Um, not just, you know, health wise, but financially. Um, I know that um, even though I am in the medical field, we um, are only working every other week, like half the staff works one week, half the staff works the other week. And so of course that is, um, you know, penalizing us with our, um, you know, monthly bills and, you know, stuff like that. And it's been a struggle. Um, but, um, like I said, I definitely think that everything happens for a reason. And I think that this is just going to make us become more stronger as individuals and as, you know, the United States in general. Um, but, um, I definitely take my job very seriously and, um, I, you know, make sure that my patients are well taken care of. And I, you know, encourage them to go out and, um, you know, make sure that they're doing what they need to do to stay safe for themselves also. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so both former NJCA student athletes, um, being a student athlete at any level, uh, it's a grind, you know, education, athletics, anything from your NJCA days stand out that has helped you prepare for your future, your, your current career? Matt, if you want to go ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think the biggest thing to kind of take away is like you were saying with, the, with, with, with sports in general and especially in college sports, we played, I think it was over 50 games um, for the season when, when I was at Tallahassee Community College. Um, we were playing, I think during conference, we were playing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, at the same time, we have practices on other days. Um, we're up in the mornings a lot of times to work out. And then we also have school obviously going on as well. So one of the things that um, I really take away from it is just having that work ethic. I remember um, some of those workouts at, at 5 a.m. Uh, when you have tests or, or when you have a Wednesday game over in Pensacola three hours away, um, driving back on the bus and studying to make sure that you have that test in the morning that you're ready for, um, things like that. Um, I kind of carried with me through not only through medical school, but now through residency as well. Um, I always want to continue kind of that work ethic um, and making sure that um, I'm ready for any prepared for any situation um, and not not really the lack of preparation is not why I, is why, so is, is why I want to make sure that I am um, kind of ready for everything moving forward. Of course, yeah. Courtney, anything from Etiwamba stand out from your days that you've carried with you throughout the years? Yeah, um, I have to agree with Matt. Um, the work ethic, um, being a, a ball player and traveling and making sure that um, we get to where we need to go and making sure our schoolwork was done 
and everything like that. It, it was very hard and it was stressful, but, um, you know, when you've got that good worth ethic, ethic, um, it helps a lot. And I think that's one thing, um, that I have carried on, um, with me to work in the field that I am. Um, also, like you said, being a team player, um, you know, some people, um, I've been told several, several times that I'm a leader and um, I feel like that one of the things that I do at work is I make sure everybody, you know, kind of takes a breath and, you know, gets back on track. You know, when they get stressed out or get overwhelmed or anything like that, I just pull them aside and say, hey, look, you know, we're here as a team, you know, like um, we got to do this all together. It's not just one of us, it's all of us. So, um, so yeah, definitely worth ethic. Um, you know, just getting in there, getting it done, and then also just being that uh, team player and leader. We keep going back to that, that team mentality, you know, as a former student athlete. Um, I think, you know, we can all say that we know someone on the front lines, personally, professionally, all different, different levels. Um, Matt, do you have any advice for other people that are on the front lines right now? I mean, we can be as, they can be as prepared as possible, but it's always nice hearing other advice from people who are seeing you know, from a different state or a different perspective. Uh, any advice for other frontline workers? Absolutely. Um, so I think a big thing that with everything that's been going on is um, kind of some mental health and just stress that's going on. I know it's taking a toll on a lot of people. People are seeing things that are kind of unprecedented. I have some uh, former, former um, colleagues who are up in New York um, doing their residency training there and just hearing some of the stuff that they've seen. Because um, obviously New York, I'm in Kentucky where we haven't been hit quite as hard as some of the other states like New York, New Jersey, um, places like that. And it really does take a toll on you. There's, um, you, you see some things that you're not really prepared to see. So sitting back and making sure that you take care of yourself. Um, if, you, if that means just getting some exercise, if that means just doing something you enjoy, um, make sure you do that. Because in order for you to take care of other people, you need to make sure that you take care of yourself first and foremost. Absolutely. Courtney, any advice on your end? Um, I agree again with Matt. Um, I definitely think that you've got to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. Um, and I think that also helps persuade other people to take care of themselves, knowing that you're taking, you know, taking care of yourself. Um, I'm not super, um, you know, connected with, um, um, some former players. I mean, we've talked, we talk every now and then, but, um, you know, being in the medical field, it's really hard to get that time to, you know, have a, you know, social life, um, especially if you work in the hospital. Um, I do know uh, one of my teammates, um, Jesse Patterson, you know, she just um, got her RN uh, degree and, and working in the, um, in the hospital and, uh, and, you know, she, anything that I see like on social media or anything, you know, she seems like she's been at it pretty hard too. Um, so, you know, I just, I think that everybody needs to just stay strong and, um, work through it and have faith because we're going to get through it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. We had quite a bit of a response from uh, former student athletes who are out on the front lines and willing to participate today, but their schedules changed and just so much going on with them. They weren't able to, but it was just amazing to see the amount of, you know, former student athletes that are making an impact on, on the world today. Um, we'll take a quick break here. Uh, we'll jump into uh, Jeremy here in a second. Any of our attendees, if they do have questions uh, for any of our panelists today, feel free to drop those into the uh, chat feature here in Zoom. And following everything, we'll get back to Matt and Courtney for a little Q&A session. Um, this time, I'd like to welcome Jeremy Wilson uh, of Life Fitness. Uh, Jeremy is a national segment manager. I believe he's been with Life Fitness for 13 years now. Uh, Jeremy, welcome to uh, today's discussion. I'm glad to have you on. Hello, hello. Hey, Jeremy. Thank you for having me. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, Want to uh, thank you all for having me on today. I hope you all are staying safe and are well out there. Um, of course, my name is Jeremy Wilson. My contact information um, is there on the, the first slide there. Oh, there we go. So if you guys have any questions, need anything, feel free to reach out to me. Um, shoot me an email, text. Um, I can certainly get you in touch with your local rep. Uh, Life Fitness is a manufacturer of commercial fitness equipment. Um, so we're all over the country. 
Um, we, we, we would outfit a lot of your um, sites on campus like the athletic performance facility, the student rec center, trainer room, um, those types of facilities. So um, thank you again for having me. Thanks to the NJCAA for allowing me to speak today. And um, just real quickly, I wanna go over a little bit about our company. And then since everything that's going on here with the, the pandemic, uh, you know, a lot of the, all, all the schools are out right now. So I'm just gonna go over a few reopening tips real quick at the very end um, to your fitness facilities, might help you out whenever you get started. So um, we can go roll to the first slide, please. Um, so Life Fitness consists of six different um, brands of equipment, Life Fitness, Hammer Strength, Cybex, Indoor Cycling, SciFit, and Brunswick Billiards. Um, they all have unique places in the marketplace. Um, many of you, if you go to a club, you'll see Life Fitness. If you, most of you may all, all be uh, former student athletes, you've probably heard of Hammer Strength, it's our performance line, Cybex, Medical Wellness, Indoor Cycling, Spin Classes, SciFit, Active Aging, and then if you've ever been to a game room, Brunswick Billiards, Pool Tables, Ping Pong Tables. Um, Life Fitness, you can go to the next slide. Uh, Life Fitness, we've been in business for over 50 years now. Um, we're in 166 countries, over 60 million exercisers use our equipment each day, uh, 22 billion minutes of engagement each year, and we're over in 150,000 uh, facilities here in the U.S. So I say that to say that there's not any project that we can't handle, big or small. So um, please, again, feel free to reach out to us with any uh, of those types of equipment needs. So you can roll to the next slide. <clears throat> So not only do we have uh, fitness products, but we also um, help, help with facility management when it comes to um, uh, you know, digital solutions, particularly when it comes to cardio, tracking your users, uh, engagement of the students, um, of course, member engagement, which would be with our brand of pro our breadth of product, the aesthetics and um, the different brands that we have and the digital solutions that come on the consoles as well. We have a vast array of uh, customer service representatives. Uh, when you call in to um, get assistance, we have direct sales, or we have direct sales reps and direct service techs all over the country um, that can come out and service the equipment. And we have a network of ISOs, which are our individual service providers around the country. Um, as I mentioned, we've got a very big sales force. Uh, we also have dealers, so they're more than happy to come out and help you with any facility layouts, any design um, that you might have uh, in your uh, facilities, and then we can work with you on the quotes uh, to get the equipment in there. And then last, uh, the last arm is our Life Fitness Academy. Um, that's just the training post, um, post install of the equipment. And we have webinars and YouTube uh, videos on our YouTube channel for uh, ongoing training. Next slide. So these are some of the markets that we are involved with. Uh, two to point out are our campus rec or university rec centers and of course our collegiate athlete facilities. I know a lot of times in a junior college, community college, your, your facilities may be combined. Um, so you know we have experience with those combined facilities and also um, if you have separate facilities on campus, we can help you out with that. So next slide. Um, so a few tips for reopening, um, you can go to the next one. So the first one would be just to prepare your facility um, for, for any kind of, um, or for reopening. A couple of items I wanna point out, if you have cardio in the facilities, make sure you just plug them in and turn them on. Um, a lot of times you can avoid some service calls if you just check that, especially if they've been down for a long time. And if you have self-powered units in the facility, you know you can get on and start pedaling those when it comes to ellipticals and bikes, and that'll usually charge up the batteries um, and you don't have to, to get a service call out there. So just remember that when you're starting to back up. And then one thing on the strength equipment too, um, there's some guide rods on there, three-in-one um, oil um, or, some uh, any kind of lubricant, just no WD-40, wipe those down. Sometimes accumulates rust whenever it's been sitting for a while. And then lastly, if you go to the next slide there for the, the cleaning uh, in the facility, this is what most people are gonna be focused on when you go back into the facilities. Um, you can see here a couple of approved cleaners that we have, the Pure Green 24, gym wipes. And then if you don't have access to those, then just some mild soap and water. We usually recommend like a Dawn uh, dishwashing detergent, a uh, 20 to one ratio and a spray bottle will do just fine. That won't ruin your, your upholstery and it'll, and it'll keep everything clean and, and kill most of the bacteria and the viruses uh, that are on them. So I uh, got a couple other um, advised cleaning materials there in the bottom corner. Not sure if you can really see that or not. So the next slide. 
the second thing, just the implementation of new procedures and guidelines. So that's basically social distancing of your fitness equipment. Uh, like I said, we've got plenty of reps out there in the field. They're more than happy to come in and, and help you work out a layout that will space out your equipment, maybe take a few pieces out. We've heard of a lot of different facilities using their gym floors uh, because they're not going to be having a lot of indoor activities on the gymnasium floors right now. So they'll expand the fitness equipment to spread it out a little bit, maybe take some pieces and put it in storage. Next slide. Uh, so lastly, just educate and prepare your staff. I know that you're probably doing that uh, a lot throughout all of the campus um, facilities and departments, but you know, for, for your fitness staff and for the facilities, your athletic staff, just staff, just make sure that you're you know, getting them prepared and going over the guidelines for the state and national and, and city guidelines that they're putting out. So last slide here um, that we have, if you switch it. So another value add that we that we provide every year is, is our hammer strength clinics. This year it's virtual. Um, it's a great chance for your coaches, um, your strength coaches that you have on staff to get their CEUs, NSCA, CSCCA, CEUs. Um, it's actually going on right now as we speak here the first day, um, second day is tomorrow, and then we end up on the 27th. Got some great speakers on there. Um, and your coaches can sign up all the way through the end of uh, the 27th. And um, get some good tips and get some CEUs as well because the because the events recorded. So thank you for your time. Um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and we can get you connected. Thank you. Jeremy, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's great to see how Life Fitness has adapted during all of this. And again, we appreciate you have, uh, being on with us today. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, as I mentioned before, we did have quite a bit of uh, feedback from uh, student athletes who are on the front lines, and unfortunately, some of them were unable to join us today. Uh, but we did receive a video from uh, Kirsten Albright, uh, a former student athlete at Georgia Military College. Um, she's going to kind of talk a little bit about her path to the NJCA, uh, her responsibilities, her career right now. Um, Kirsten was an all-region player for the uh, Georgia Military Bulldog softball team, and they captured the uh, NJCA Region 17 uh, region championship that Kirsten was a part of. So we'll get into Kirsten here and uh, here she is. Hey, I'm Kirsten. I was asked to come on here and speak about my experience in the NJCAA, as well as my experience as a nurse during the COVID-19 pandemic. I went to Georgia Military College in 2015 and 2016 where I played softball. I chose GMC because I really loved the small campus feel. I did go to a private school and high school, so this felt like a great transition for me academically. Athletically, I wasn't sure if I wanted to play four years of college softball, so playing the NJCAA was a great stepping stone for me to figure out those goals, and if that was my goal, I would have had a great opportunity to obtain it. In the NJCAA, it's a smaller team size, so you get very, very close to your teammates and your coaches. Um, your coaches really care to know uh, what your goals are going forward. And, um, you know, I got super close to Coach Ashley and Coach Eddie along with all my teammates. And that's probably one of my favorite parts about being at a smaller school like that. Um, discipline is probably the most important thing I learned while I was there. I don't, still to this day, don't know how I figured out how to juggle two to three practices a day, two to three classes a day a social life, sleep, and homework. i um, not sure how I learned it, but I learned discipline super early on, and I think that's something that's still evident in my nursing career today. So I'm very thankful to have had the opportunity to learn that discipline, and I'm thankful that my coach has really drove in the importance of discipline and responsibility. Um, GMC offered a lot of wide variety of clubs and extracurricular activities. I personally don't do as well in a large setting, so this smaller setting was kind of where I felt more comfortable. So I did join several extracurricular activities besides softball. Um, I was in the biology club my sophomore year, and I got to go to Florida and swim with manatees. This was just one of the coolest experiences, and I don't think it's something I would have probably um, gone for if I would have been at a larger school. One of my favorite memories today ever was winning GMC's first softball NJCAA conference championship. Um, so we won that in 2016 and we got to fly out to Utah as a team and compete in nationals. While we were there, the NJCAA did an awesome job of you know, providing open ceremonies, providing events and activities for us the full week. So it was a lot of fun. Um, I seriously think that experience is just unmatched and many people don't get to have that experience. So I'm super grateful for that. 
Um, I now work as a nurse at UAB ER in Birmingham, Alabama. I also work part-time as a clinical instructor for Beville State Community College, and I eventually plan to go back and pursue a master's degree in nurse education. My shifts now look a lot different than pre-COVID. Um, in the ER, we are a lot of times the first encounter to these patients before they go to the floor. So it's our job in the ER to recognize who might be at risk for COVID, positive for COVID, or kind of just unknown. Um, we consider these patients PUIs, which stands for person under investigation. This sounds scary. It just means from our standpoint, we're going to treat them like they have COVID until we know that they don't. This protects the staff and this prevents the spread of infection throughout the hospital. Uh, PPE for us is a gown, gloves, an N95 mask, a surgical mask over that, and a face shield. So we're pretty much covered from head to below the knee. Uh, these patients are very involved, so you might be in their room sometimes up to an hour in this PPE. So it gets really hot, it can get tiring. Uh, we've gotten kind of used to it, honestly. It kind of feels like the norm now. Um, so honestly, I hope it doesn't always stay like that, but right now we're kind of used to it. We're kind of adapting and learning. You know, things are changing every day still. Um, so we're just still kind of trying to go with the flow and figure it out as we go along. Um, one of the coolest things I've gotten to experience while the COVID pandemic has been going on is the incredible support from the Birmingham community. Um, I can't tell you how many meals we've had delivered to us since the end of March. Like people in groups and organizations have just really covered us with days and night shift. They've covered food, they've covered uh, desserts, they've covered giving us sweet letters of encouragement. Kids have sent us letters. Our break room is just filled with cool little posters from kids. Um, our CNO has really done a lot to show us she appreciates us. Um, it's just been a really cool experience. You know, Birmingham Police Department grilled for us one night and made sure we had food on night shift and day shift. Um, you know, they're on the front lines as well, along with Birmingham Fire, EMS. Um, it's just been like crazy to see the support from the community. It makes you feel very appreciated and kind of proud to be a healthcare worker. Um, other than that, I have been practicing social distancing for my family. They live in Georgia, and so uh, I just thought this was probably the smartest decision right now as we are still getting a lot of COVID patients. Um, so I just felt that it was safer to keep that distance for now. We do get to FaceTime and we talk on the phone, but it's just been different because usually I see them at least every few weeks. Um, but I work with some really awesome people and some really cool people, and they've just been my rock through this. Um, no one really gets what you're going through unless they're going through it with you. So I've just been super thankful to work with some great people. Um, yeah, I feel honored to have been asked to make this video, and I hope it was helpful and you got some insight into kind of what my GMC days were like, as, long, as well as my nursing during COVID pandemic days are like. Um, but yeah, shout out to all the other healthcare workers. I wish I could have been there on live stream today, but I do have to work. Um, but yeah, again, thanks for asking me to make this video, and stay safe and wash your hands. All right, we appreciate uh, Kirsten being on today. Again, she wasn't able to make it, but really appreciate having her uh, send us in the video and kind of talk about her days at GMC and what she does now. Um, at this time, uh, we'd like to welcome uh, Andrew Keane of First Point USA, um, the official UK and China recruiting partner of the NJCA. Uh, Andrew, a little bit about him. Uh, he is the chief executive of First Point USA. Uh, Andrew is actually a former uh, NCA student athlete uh, he came over from Scotland in the mid-1990s and played soccer uh, for the Cincinnati University Bearcats, where he was the program's first ever All-American. Um, he also took the Bearcats to the NCAA tournament in 1998. Um, Andrew, thanks for joining us today and welcome. Thanks, Ricky. A great pleasure to be part of the webinar. And um, good afternoon to everybody in the U.S. It's an uh, evening here in the United Kingdom, but um, as I say, great to be part of this. Really interesting also to listen to, to Matt, Courtney and Kirsten's story and to learn about their, their roles in the fight against COVID-19. Um, certainly great ambassadors for the NJCA and uh, a real inspiration to lots of future uh, student athletes um, who I'm sure will be listening to this and participating in the, in the webinar. Um, so, so just to provide you with, with a little bit of background about First Point, uh, really conscious about time and, and conscious about boring people as well, uh, and also the thick Scottish accent that I've got, so I'll apologise in advance for that. But um, yeah, First Point, if you move on to the next slide, um, the one after that as well, that'd be great. <laughs> We're at 
or a consultant, say an educational consultant, say that evaluates approximately a hundred thousand prospective student athletes each year, and we are trying to educate both those student athletes and their families about the fantastic opportunities that exist in junior college and also at four-year institutions across the U.S. And we're founded in two thousand and one, and we cover various international territories from the United Kingdom, Europe, Middle East, China, Australia and New Zealand. Next slide please. Um, just some stats. Um, we work with approximately two and a half thousand schools that have generated just over a billion dollars in, in tuition fees from international students for those institutions. And again since 2001 we've been really fortunate to and put over 23,000 international student athletes on that path towards academic and athletic success at US institutions. Next slide. Um, there's 72 of us at first point. We're um, all former college athletes. Um, some like myself are more former than others. Um, we all went to different schools. We have a number of um, junior college alumni and our staff, a number of athletes um, and staff members who are at NEIA institutions, D3, D2, D1. So a broad mix of different experiences that we're able to share with families and other prospective student athletes. We are um, very proud of our relationship with the NJCA. Um, it's, it's critically important to us because it's been such an important pathway for a number of our student athletes over the years and provided them with such a fantastic academic and athletic experience. And as I'm sure all student athletes who are participating in the webinar can testify, the relationships that you build during your time in college are ones that uh, last forever. So in addition to, to the partnership we have with the NJCA, we're also a NCAA certified and approved uh, scouting service and the official international recruitment partner for the NEIA and in addition to athletic recruitment we also work in standard student recruitment and for that we're certified and approved by the American International Recruitment Council. So just to provide a, a really brief overview of um, the kind of fundamental role um, for first point and, and the services that we're providing to member institutions. Um, you know, we, we work across 30 sports. So we're, we're pre-qualifying athletes, both in terms of their athletic abilities, their suitability and eligibility for NJC institutions, and making sure that with the right academic um, credentials, athletic fit, and also importantly for internationals that they understand and have the financial wherewithal to make a good contribution financially towards the school. Um, for a lot of institutions that we're working with, the, the, particularly in the current climate where there's concerns about international enrollment, we do play a role for schools where we're not just recruiting and identifying suitable athletic talent, but we're also trying to provide a boost in, in overall international enrollment of non-athletes. So for a number of NJCA um, colleges, we work both in athletic recruitment and standard student recruitment to help bring great quality international student athletes and non-athletes into the institutions. Um, all of our um, student athletes are, are evaluated on the athletic side. We will put them through SAT testing, ACTs, English proficiency, NCRED grade evaluation reports, a lot of the kind of administrative and legislative processes which are essential when you're dealing with an international often referred to as a heavy lifting um, when, when recruiting internationally. That's all dealt with by First Point and our staff to ensure that schools can, and coaches can recruit with some confidence and without the hassle of, of trying to determine whether or not they can actually um, get a student athlete into the program or into their institution. And once we've assisted with the admissions process uh, and everything involved in that, we take both the student and the family through the student visa process. 
uh, ensuring that all the necessary steps are taken care of in advance of their arrival on campus. Part of our obligation to every student that we work with is to provide them with pastoral support. So, you know, when they're attending uh, uh, NJCA institution, it provides them with a fantastic platform to progress onto something else, whether it's to use their associate's degree um, to go into employment, um, or whether it's to go into a four-year institution. So we provide that pastoral support and we'll visit them on campus throughout the year so that we can then assist with their exit from the college. Next slide. It's just a brief um, stat and image of um, the kind of numbers of international students pre-COVID, I would add. Um, you know, I know from looking at quite a lot of the media in the US and, and quite a lot of the press, there's been some real concerns and a lot of commentary about the, the fear of international students being put off the prospect of coming over to the United States. Certainly for the, the 2000 or so international uh, students and student athletes that first point have in the US this fall, um, very, very few of them have been put off at all. In fact, they're all chomping at the bit. Um, the challenges at the moment are just the administrative process of things coming out of lockdown to allow students to secure visas and come over. But the United States will always be the number one destination for international students. And certainly there's a huge appetite um, all over the world from prospective students and student athletes to attend some of the fantastic institutions that are available across the country. Next step. Again, this is just a brief illustration of, of our engagement with schools. You know, to summarise really, really quickly, um, when we're working with um, NJCA colleges, um, we're here for them. So every college, understandably, will have very different needs, whether it's athletically or whether it's with student recruitment. And it's, it's up to us really to serve their needs and to make sure that um, the school is, is having its reach increased internationally. Um, to make sure that it's been well represented, um, information about the opportunities available at the institution have been well presented at high schools in China or in Italy or in France or in Australia, and fundamentally to make sure that that pathway for really talented and eager international student athletes is there and, and coming into, into the partner institution that we're working with. In some of the benefits, you probably say I, I might be slightly biased as a former international student athlete myself. Um, you know, I think I think in the now nowadays the world's a lot smaller, and I think that um, you know, in addition to maybe the competitive advantage that, that one or two international athletes of a certain caliber can provide to a team, or um, the, the, the kind of mix of camaraderie within a team that, that having some internationals can bring. It's, it's that diverse cultural environment on campus, which I, which I certainly took away from my time at Cincinnati. And, um, you know, there's been a number of NJCA colleges who've done an incredible job over the last 20, 30 years in establishing um, really strong recruitment of international athletes coming in and internationally um, I have a fantastic reputation as a result of that. Um, so yeah lots of benefits for international students coming in and um, you know hopefully there, there remains an appetite for member institutions to look overseas to bring talented hungry young student athletes in um, after we come out of this pandemic. Next slide. And that's it, guys. That's it. Happy to answer any questions if anyone has them at the appropriate time. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Appreciate having you on. A lot of great information there. And you know, we're thankful for all you do for the NJCA. So again, thanks for being on today. Pleasure. Thanks, Ricky. Absolutely. Um,
again, we mentioned before, a lot of student athletes on the front lines. Um, at this point, we'd like to highlight a few of those uh, that were unable to join us today, but we'd still like to recognize them. Uh, a couple of posts that we have here, uh, we have Elantra Tucker, um, again, from Etiwamba. We mentioned that Etiwamba had quite a bit of frontline workers currently. Um, so it's really great to see, you know, all of them and what they're doing for us out there. Um, our next one is Jessica patterson Coon, uh, a former Etiwamba softball player, um, one of Courtney's teammates there. We've got Meg Witten, also an Etiwamba softball player from 2011 to 2012. From Ocean County, uh, we've got a couple um, student athletes, former student athletes that were unable to join us today, but Julianne Price, Maret, Mir Tedes, um, provide some insight and advice from the front line. Uh, Ocean County recently highlighted a couple of their alumni. We also got Rachel Hollywood, a uh, former softball player. Um, she has a 19 year career in the nursing field, uh, former Ocean County alumni. We got former student athletes from uh, Frederick Community College as well. And also from Pima. Um, so there's just a couple of former uh, former student athletes that are currently on the front lines uh, battling the, the coronavirus pandemic and very thankful and appreciative of all they do for us and uh, making the NJCA proud for sure. Um, at this point, we'd like to bring Matt and Courtney back on. Uh, just a quick little Q&A. We've got a couple questions uh, from our attendees. Uh, so we'll get Matt and Courtney back on video here. Matt, we actually have a question for you here uh, from Stephen Collier. Uh, Matt, what are your concern? What concerns you the most if the athletes do play in the fall uh, with a potential second wave? So it's definitely uh, kind of a difficult question. Um, obviously, everyone wants sports to be back as soon as possible. I know even myself, I miss them uh, pretty greatly as well. Um, but a big thing is just going to be the amount of testing. Um, obviously, going forward, a lot of these these sports are contact sports. It's football, basketball, and you're in direct contact, and obviously. Uh, player safety and then uh, spectator and fan safety is going to be of utmost importance. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see over the next few weeks as the country kind of starts to slowly open back up, um, whether whether we have another kind of a big second wave or um, how we kind of deal with that. And I think that's going to be kind of paramount in um, seeing what direction we go. Because um, obviously, like I said, the big thing is really just making sure that everyone's safe um, before we kind of start to move forward with all of these things. Absolutely. Uh, looking through, um, again, if anyone has any questions, feel free to drop those in the Zoom chat feature. Uh, we do have a few minutes left here. Um, you know, at this point, uh, Matt, Courtney, any final words, any any advice, any anything you'd like to say to all of our attendees that are on today? Courtney, you can go first if you'd like to say anything. Okay, thank you. Um, I just want to say um, what a great opportunity it is to be on this webinar with you guys. Um, I am very fortunate to um, be a part of the NJCAA uh, community and um, uh, I just want everybody to stay safe and, um, you know, stay healthy. Absolutely. And kind of like, like Courtney was saying, um, thanks, thanks so much for having me. Um, again, I think I'm so thankful for everything that the NJCAA did for me um, in the past and continues to do for me. Um, as for everybody else who's watching, uh, just continue to kind of take care of yourselves. And one kind of piece of advice moving forward, like I said, as the country starts to kind of open back up, um, just continue to be safe. Uh, I, would, I would just definitely recommend um, going about things still cautiously. Continue to use um, good hand hygiene. Wash your hands. Uh, use stay six, six feet apart, um, things like that. Um, because just because we are starting to open things back up does not necessarily mean that this virus is completely over. It's still very... Um, relevant and prevalent. So um, just be safe and uh, kind of you know, move forward and uh, that's it. Absolutely. I couldn't have said that any better than what you two just uh, touched on there. And again, you know, we just really appreciate all you guys do uh, out on the front lines and uh, we appreciate your, your support of the NJCA, former student athletes. Uh, again, you make our association proud and, you know, it's what we really take pride in as our former student athletes, our current student athletes. Uh, day to day, you guys always make us proud and we appreciate all you do. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, looks like those are all the questions that we have for you. Um, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Andrew and Jeremy as well. I uh, we appreciate you guys being on with us today. Uh, next week, uh, we will have our final NJCA Forward webinar series. Uh, this topic is looking ahead, long-term strategies for athletic departments. Um, this will be uh, run by Carrie Ann McTiernan, Director of Athletics at Nassau, and Tim, Tim Drain, Associate Vice Provost of Student Affairs at Tyler Junior College. 
I will also be joined by Commerce Bank and Masters Transportation. Uh, today's recording will be available on NJCA Connect. Uh, will be out available on social media as well later today. Um, we appreciate everybody being on today. Uh, we had a great turnout as always. Um, and thanks for all of our, our, our panelists and uh, best of luck to everybody out there. And thanks again.